In this video, I want to take you through the process of uh, producing Data Activity 5, which was submitted as a presentation. This is new. You've been submitting these as spreadsheets. When statisticians present data, they do not present a spreadsheet. Statisticians present data using presentations. This guided activity will introduce you to analyzing data in a Google Sheet spreadsheet and then moving that data to a Google Slides presentation. I'm doing this on a laptop. There are some other videos to help show you how to do it on a mobile device, but it is much more difficult. You should go ahead and measure your own fibro belly ratio using the help of a friend or sibling. There are directions here in the assignment, and then you can add your own ratio to cell A26 of the data. You can make a copy of that data and add your own ratio down here in A26. The first thing that I I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at whether or not a 95% confidence interval is likely to be appropriate for this data. And to do that, I'm going to make a histogram. I'm looking to see whether I get a roughly symmetric centrally peak distribution. That means that a confidence interval can reliably be calculated and used to do hypothesis testing. If there is too much skew, the confidence interval results may not be accurate. It only has to be roughly symmetric. This is very symmetric, quite frankly. It differs by only one person uh, between the left and the right. So this is very symmetric data. The, the fibro belly ratios are very symmetrically distributed. I will go to customize to set up the, uh, make sure I've got the chart titles that I want, and I see that the horizontal axis looks good. The vertical axis isn't labeled yet. I'm going to go ahead and put in that that's the frequency. This is a histogram. I will later be moving this histogram over to a presentation, but for now I'll just set that aside down here. I'm going to need some statistics uh, to uh, present. The first statistic I'm going to need is the golden ratio itself. The golden ratio is approximately 1.618. That's a given the presentation. And that's what the fibro belly ratio is said to be, theoretically said to be that. Uh, we can see that in actuality it varies, of course. But we do see some people are near 1.618. So is the average potentially 1.618? Um, the sample size is always a good thing to calculate. We're going to need that later anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right up front. The last cell will be yours, which will be an A26 there. You can see that's 24. I like to copy this piece because I know I'm going to use it a couple more times. Let's see if the mean, the sample mean, is indeed 1.618 for these uh, students here. A little one too many parentheses, get rid of that. 1.5. So the sample mean is not uh, is not uh, is not 1.618. But that doesn't mean that the overall population mean couldn't be 1.618. Maybe it is. To rule in or rule out the possibility that the population mean, this is my possible population mean up here, to rule that in or out. I'm going to construct a 95% confidence interval. To do that, I'm going to need, among other things, the standard deviation. That's equal to the STDEV of my data. I'm going to need the standard error of the mean. And that's going to be equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of that uh, sorry, of that sample size, come up here, it should be the sample size D, put that, if that gets in your way, just get rid of it, D2, D2, that number there, 24, should point and click and put that in. Double click this, uh, just to, I'm double clicking up here to spread it out some. I'm going to need the T critical. And I'm going to use a uh, five, a 95% confidence interval. 
and remembering that 1 minus 0 0.95 is a 5% or 0 0.05. Uh, it's going to go into there. That's We're going to learn to later call that alpha. That's just what we call it. But the T critical is a T inverse of 0 0.05 comma N minus 1. We always use 0 0.05 there, N minus 1. Um, that's two. That's good. I want to see a number. If, if, if my sample size is less than about 30, I'm going to see a number above two. If I get a sample size above 60, I might start to edge under two. But that T critical is going to be somewhere around that ballpark. So notice I've used 0 0.05 here. Do not put 95% in T inverse. No, never do that. So now I'm going to look at my 95% confidence interval. Uh, and so for that, I'm going to calculate the uh, lower bound. I'll just go ahead and I'm going to move that down one. And up here, I'll put the 95% confidence interval bound just to make it stand out more. And the lower bound is going to go down here. That's going to be equal to the average minus the T critical times the standard error of the mean. And the upper bound is going to be equal to the average plus t critical times the standard error of the mean. This tells me, let me go ahead, let's get rid of some of these decimals so we can see this a little better. Then one more, we can toss out another one. That's fine. We don't want to get rid of too many. We want to be able to see the standard error of the mean. And let's give this thing a bit of a... Uh, later on, I'm going to move it, so I want it to look a little bit like a table. So I'm going to go ahead and add borders to it. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, take everything here. I'm going to do a command or control X and command or control there. I'm going to give this a label 2. I'm going to call this basic statistics, uh, just to keep the audience oriented. You'll see where this is going a little later. I'm already planning ahead for the next uh, part of this. Uh, make it decorated a little bit, make it look a little nicer, because I'll be using it in a presentation. Maybe make that bold and make this one bold, too. I can see now that my golden ratio up here and my upper and lower bounds down here. Well, this tells me that the population mean for this group of students is between 1.4 and 1.5. The population mean is somewhere between there. It is not up at 1.6. So that eliminates the possibility that this sample comes from a population with a golden ratio as their fibble belly ratio. It, it's an interesting theory, but it's not true for the uh, sample here. It's not the population mean for the students who have uh, in MS-150 who have participated in this activity in the past. We can rule it out because the upper bound for the possible population mean for the sample is 1.534. So let's, let's get those pieces over to a spreadsheet. There are a couple different ways to do this. Uh, but probably the easiest way is, is to go, not to a spreadsheet, to a, to a presentation. Um, the easiest th way I like to do this is to go to my drive, because it's from my drive that I can see the files I'm working on. There's that file. When I want to go back to this file, I can get back to it from my drive. And so I'll go over here, and I'll tell it I want new, and I want the new slides. And so uh, anytime I want to get back to something, so this is my Fibble belly presentation. Please add my initials. Uh, and that will show up here on my list of most recent files when I come back to my drive in the future. If I just uh, refresh this now. There's the, so now I can get to my files. So you don't need to start over from scratch. Learning to go to your drive, drive.google.com is really important. Plus, it also gives you access to all sorts of other things like your mail, which you should check, and other features in your account.
This is all in my college account over here. You can see that there. It's the college account I'm working in. All right, this is going to be my fibro belly racial presentation. Fibro belly racial presentation. I like to give things a, some kind of theme. You pick what theme you like. Uh, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, close that. It might give me more space. Put in a new slide. Uh, this will be my introduction. My introduction uh, down here. Tell the audience. Tell the audience. Tell the audience what you are investigating. In other words, uh, in this case, uh, uh, this uh, presentation explores whether the uh, location of the human belly button conforms to the golden racial. And you can put this in your own words. Slide, get yourself a new slide. I'm going to bring over my, my uh, chart first, uh, my histogram, histogram chart uh, to determine similar, you know, yeah, just leave it that way. Let's call it Instagram chart. Let's not get fancy for now. Yeah, we're trying to get the idea across. On a laptop and on a desktop, you can go down to chart from sheets. See that down there? I'm in insert, insert, chart from sheets. That will open up. It will show me my most recent documents. And so I will click on the one I want to get the chart from. There's the chart I want. Click on the chart. And down here at the bottom, it will let me add that chart in. I'll just double click this one and press enter to import that chart. Well, I'm going to have to stretch my little bit of down. There's a, a, uh, a uh, yellow button. I can't make, it's very difficult for me to get you to see this. Let me drag this just a moment. There's a button down here. There we go. Import. And I will import that. And that will put the histogram chart right on my slide. Right there. Let me move this guy back a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I do want you to be able to see where I'm working. Uh, I'm working on a bit of a small screen. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add another slide into which I'm going to put my basic statistics. You're going to do the same thing. The goal here is to show you how to do this yourself, how to actually go ahead and do this on your own. I'm going to delete the text box because I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and I'm just going to select this data here and I'll go to I tend to like to use the command copy or control copy, this control C, uh, but I'm copying this data here, the basic statistics, the 95% confidence interval, not the data. That won't fit on the slide, so I'm not going to copy that. And I'm going to just do a edit, paste, or command V. I like to do command V. You can link it to the spreadsheet or paste it unlinked. Uh, up to you what you want to do. If you keep it linked, when you update the spreadsheet, it'll update this one too. But for now, I'll keep it linked. It's a little small. You can see the type is really small. Got it, and it's in the wrong place. So I'm just trying to drag it. So you got to grab this. See that little symbol there? Then you got to grab that down and try to get it back to where you want it. There we go. And then I'm going to select all this stuff in here. And let's get the size of this up, the font size up. And then bring it so it's a bit bigger. And stretch out the table this way. And now you, you can see now as I work on this that it's uh, a part of it's off the bottom of your screen. But it's there now. Uh, but you can kind of see it. Um, let me shrink this a bit. Cannot, okay. Just leave it this way for now. Uh, but down off the bottom of the screen is the rest of that table there. So 
are working on a much reduced area here. So that's given me the basic statistics, and uh, it shows that this does not, uh, that the sample does not support. And so I'm going to wrap up with conclusion. And here you can talk about the sample data does not support a population mean of 1.618. And so this is how we would do do an actual uh, presentation to an audience. We wouldn't just show them a spreadsheet. We'd show them a presentation. Now for this assignment, I'm asking that you submit this presentation itself, that you actually submit this. You can submit this either by downloading and then uploading. You can download it as a PowerPoint or PDF and then upload it or you can also use the if you're used to using it the other submission methods available here in uh, in uh, in canvas that you've learned to use such as the LTI 1.3 you choose the way you want to try to submit this your goal in this assignment is just to duplicate the steps that I've done because this is your first time to try moving from a spreadsheet to a presentation. So uh, you're, you're actually just doing the same. You can pick whatever theme you want. Choose your own theme. Find something you like. You can make your own changes in colors. Maybe you don't like this color, so you want to change the color to something else. You can do that. You know, make it yours. Uh, and that's the presentation. Notice I did not put the data into the presentation. We don't usually put the data in the presentation. We usually uh, put the data uh, in a link or uh, say a little note that says data is available upon request, part of the data transparency stuff. But that's, that's the uh, essence of this presentation. And uh, bring this back up and you can see some of the other parts of the slides here put the theme away but there's the slides that we've got and that's the presentation and that's what we'd share with an audience uh, often on zoom these days sometimes in, in uh, we go somewhere to present with a projector but often we just pop these up on zoom this is a skill that uh, anyone working with statistics needs to have the ability to generate a presentation and you can do all of it from your browser everything automatically saved here's my presentation there's my data all available to me submit the presentation for this week's uh, data activity submit the your presentation yours will yours will be doing you'll do the same thing submit a histogram submit the basic statistics uh, you don't need to do anything different my goal is just to get you used to this idea of moving from a presentation, uh, from, sorry, from a spreadsheet to a presentation. As always, if you have questions, please ask. Uh, I know this is new, but uh, this will be a useful skill to you in whatever field you're in, this ability to get stuff from your spreadsheets to your presentations. And you can do it all without ever needing to use anything other than your browser. I'm working in Firefox, but you can use Chrome, Safari, Edge, whatever works. Thank you for, uh, for watching.